this video we'll be looking at the different types of neurons that we have in our uh, nervous system and also their structures. But before we do that, let's have a think about the nervous pathway. Right, we say that homeostasis, which is maintenance of our internal environment, relatively stable through negative feedback. And we say homeostasis is actually monitored or controlled by two specific systems in our body. One is the nervous system, which we'll focus on today, and the other one is the hormonal system, which is actually in chapter 14. So, like I said, in this video, we'll be looking at, first of all, the basics of it, which is the nervous pathway. We say that we've got the receptor which receives a stimulus or stimuli if it's multiple of them. And then the receptor will send the electrical impulse through the sensory neuron to the central nervous system. And usually in the central nervous system, that's talking about the brain and the spinal cord. And within the brain and the spinal cord, there is another type of neuron called the relay neuron, which like the name implies, relays the signal to the next part, which is usually the motor neuron. Then the impulse carried by the motor neuron will get to the effectors which will then carry out the response and we say that there are usually two types of effectors one type is muscles and the other type would be glands uh, which would the muscles tend to be more of a nervous response whereas the glands would be more of a hormonal response so this is the nervous pathway so what we'll look at today is first of all the structure of the sensory neuron the relay neuron and the motor neuron and some specific structures within each and every one of them now before we do that, we're going to have a look at some of the general structures that we can find in neurons. So the dendron is referring to the part of the neuron which sends the impulse to the cell body. Now in uh, some of the uh, neurons that we'll look at, they have the cell body in the middle of the neuron, some of them have the, it at the beginning. So it depends entirely on what type it is, then uh, we, we call them either dendron or dendrites, depending on the size of it. So that's the first thing. Then a cell body can actually do different things, but one of the major things is that it can release neurotransmitters, um, which we'll come back to uh, later on as well. But usually we can decide if that neuron is a sensory or motor neuron, depending on where we find the cell body. So the location of the cell body on the neuron actually helps us determine the type of neuron it is. Then we've got the axon, which is usually a longer structure, a long straight structure after the cell body, and it sends the impulse away from the cell body. One way to remember this is that axon starts with A, so it's sending impulse away from the cell body. And then finally, we've got the myelin sheath. So if a neuron has myelin sheath around it, we say that it's a myelinated neuron. And then we've also got non-myelinated neurons, depending on what the function would be. But the myelin sheath itself is, uh, is actually a layer of plasma membranes that could go up to about 100 layers of them. Uh, sometimes you might have seen in some sort of books, they would call, say that the myelin sheath is actually a layer of fat or lipids. And uh, actually, it's made up of glycolipids and cholesterol as well. But the myelin sheet is actually really important because it acts as an insulation layer on the neuron that actually helps speed up the rate of nervous transmission. But we'll come back to that in a second. So these are the four general structures of neurons. So what we're going to do now is to look at the actual structures of the different types of neurons. Now, first of all, we've got the sensory neuron. So this is what the sensory neuron looks like. In the beginning, we've got these, uh, the beginning branches. So at the end of these branches, they will be connected to uh, receptors where they receive the actual uh, signal or they, where they initiate that impulse. So these branches are what we call dendrites because they're smaller bits of the dendron, which is the actual, uh, actual neuron itself. So this is the major dendron, but then we've got the dendrite, which are the branches that comes out of it. Then here we've got the cell body. And as we mentioned earlier, when the receptors uh, receive an impulse or receive a stimulus and they will initiate an impulse send, uh, that is sent through the dendrites, then to the dendron, and then to the cell body. Then afterwards, they will be sent along the axon, which is the part of the neuron after the cell body, away from, and then they transmit the impulse away from the cell body, and then they can reach the end, which also has branches to them. So these are also axons as well, but just branches of them. And it's worth knowing that actually the neuron itself could have multiple branches depending on where you find it in the body and its function as well. Then you can see that there are these blocks in uh, along the actual neuron, and we uh, we will actually uh, see them on most of the sensory and motor neurons that we look at. These blobs there are the myelin sheet that I've mentioned earlier, and so what happens is uh, the impulse would actually jump 
along uh, the the bits that doesn't have the myelin sheaf on it and these are what we call the nodes of Ranvier. To know this in a bit more detail you can have a look at the action potential uh, video that I've made but we say that the action potential or the impulse is uh, can only be transmitted across the nodes of Ranvier because it's all relying on the diffusion of um, ions that goes into and out of the neuron. So what happens is that when the signal is being triggered, the action potential is triggered, the ions diffuse into the neuron but because there is the insulating myelin sheath layer they cannot actually go out there so they just have to diffuse along the neuron to the next node of Ranvier where they can trigger another impulse another action potential for them to go through. So rather than having the action potential occurring along every single point of the neuron, they just literally happen at those nodes of Ranvier, so it speeds up the reaction a lot quicker. So this is the sensory neuron which sends the impulse in that particular direction, from the dendrites to the dendron um, to the cell body, then to the axons. Now on the other hand, we've also got the motor neuron. So on the motor neuron, one distinction is that they've got the cell body in the beginning of the neuron. So that's the cell body. And you can see, uh, well, all of these branches are the dendrites that we've mentioned. So because there are smaller branches, so we call them dendrites rather than dendron. So the dendrites would receive the impulse, let's say, from the relay neuron or from the central nervous system. Then they would go through the dendrite into the cell body then they would go through the axon, which is this particular, uh, th this part of the neuron that goes after the cell body. Then again, you've got branches of the axons, and then we've also got the myelin sheath once more, and also the nodes of Ranvier in between the myelin sheath. So the nodes of Ranvier simply refer to the parts of the neuron that is not myelinated, again speeding up the transmission of the nerve impulse. Now, of course, between the sensory neuron and the motor neuron, we can also find the relay neuron if it's uh, found in if the, if the signal is being relayed in the spinal cord, for example. So for the relay neuron, we've got the cell body in the middle, as you can see, is a lot smaller than the motor and, and the sensory neuron. Um, to make it clearer to see where the signal is coming from, uh, the blue parts are the dendrites where uh, they receive the signal uh, from, let's say, the sensory neuron. Then the red branches that I've drawn there are actually the axons which actually sends the signal away from the cell body to the next part which is usually connecting to the motor neuron. So the blue bits are the dendrites receiving the signal from the sensory neuron, the red bits are showing the axons which relays the signal along to the motor neuron. So this is the Rene neuron. Then here I've got the myelin sheath, which is actually the layer of plasma membrane that I mentioned earlier. So you can either call it a layer of plasma membranes or a layer of lipids, which insulates the neuron. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the myelin sheath is an insulating layer that speeds up the nerve impulse transmission at the nodes of Ranvier, which is literally those bits there. Um, this is what we call saltatory conduction when we're talking about that sped up nerve impulse transmission. For more information on that, you can uh, have a look at that video where I talked about the action potential being transmitted across the uh, neuron. Now the thing is you also need to be aware of the cell that actually produces the myelin sheath, which is this particular cell here. This is what we call the Schwann cell, named after the scientists who discovered it. So the Schwann cell itself produces the myelin sheath. And there you have it, you've got the different structures of and the different types of neurons that we'll look at. So the first one, just a very quick recap, here we've got the sensory neuron, which has the dendrites and then the dendron, and have the cell body in the middle of the neuron, uh, which then transmit the signal along the axon as well. So you have different branches. Then we say the signal will reach the relay neuron, uh, let's say for example the blue branches of the relay neuron are the dendrites, which trans receives the signal from the sensory neuron, goes to the cell body, and then uh, relays the signal through the axons, which branches off from the cell body of the relay neuron. Then from the relay neuron, they can get to the motor neuron, where the dendrites receive the signal again, and then they go to the cell body, then through the axon, again to the branches, usually to the effectors, which would be either muscle or glands, depending on what kind of uh, reaction you are going to have. And we say on along the neurons we can find the myelin sheath and the nodes of Ranvier. 
Okay, so the myelin sheath is uh, an, it's basically a layer of plasma membrane, which, uh, or you can say a layer of fats, which acts as an insulating layer, and they allow saltatory conduction to occur. And the reason why we can have these myelin sheath produced is because of the existence of Schwann cells, which actually produces these myelin uh, and allow them to deposit along the neuron.